Welcome to lesson number eight. And originally I was going to do the HTML, HTML and CSS for the administration side, but I'm actually think I'm going to do, um, we'll be skipping that. And later on at the very end, after we finish all of these, I'll be doing a, an HTML tutorial and just some general HTML and a CSS tutorial and some general CSS. And then you can kind of use that to guide you through <clears throat> how I did the admin. Uh, side of things. Uh, it's just so much code and a lot of it's really redundant. I feel like it's pointless for me to walk you through every little detail, but maybe if I show you um, some basic general rules of both HTML and CSS, then when you look through the source code, uh, it'll all make sense to you on exactly what I'm doing to get it to look like that. Uh, so instead, we're going to go ahead and jump on in to making the dynamic side. Uh, this is the site we've been working on. And last time we set up the username and password so we can log in. But there's nothing here. You can tell I have like some sections, but there's nothing underneath them. So we need to build the forms to do that. So let's go ahead and get into Dreamweaver. And this is the index.php of the admin page that I've written. Um, and now we need to basically build the forms. I'm going to go ahead and start with the easiest one, which is the add a new post form. And all you do is make sure you're in the data section tab on Dreamweaver and then come over here and roll over it. You can see what they do. You got update record and insert record. And we want to insert a record because we are going to be adding a new record to our blog database. Well, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the SS blog database in the blog table. So just click the down arrow and then let's go ahead and just use the wizard. Record a record insertion form wizard. Uh, Click that. Uh, after inserting, oh, first thing, make sure we have the right connection, dbcon that we created earlier on. Uh, pick the table, and we want the blog table. After inserting the record, what page do you want to go? So we want to send them to a page that I've already built. We'll be talking about it here in a little bit, but probably not today. But it's going to send them to a success.php page so they can have confirmation that it went through. Otherwise, they'll get an error uh, that just says, you know, null fields cannot complete and they'll they'll know that it didn't work but if it works they'll get a success page um, some of the things we're going to want to get rid of is we want to get rid of the ID because we don't need them in entering that information and the date uh, in inserts it automatically so I'm going to get rid of that now when we do the if you wanted to edit we'll have an edit form also where they can edit uh, posts that they put in already and on the edit form uh, we'll have it pull in the date then, and so if they wanted to go back and change the date later, they can, and it will save it appropriately in the database. But for this one, we'll get rid of the date, and we'll just leave the rest of them in there. Um, go ahead, you can change the labels if you want to, but I, this actually builds um, a table format for the form, and it's okay to use tables, but I didn't style this page to use the table, so instead I kind of get cut out all the table information, and I just use labels and fields, inputs, basically. And I'll show you that in a second. And everything else you can just leave default for now. So click OK. And it did all that PHP for us. If you come down, you can see here is our table with all of our form fields in it. And it's not going to look quite right just yet, but go ahead and save that. And let's reload the page. And there we go, under Add a New Post. Let's just see if it works. So Scott and the title. This is a dynamic title. And the subtitle, <clears throat> this is my third subtitle. Article, I'll just paste something in. Um, for the video, let's paste something in. For the video, for now, let's just do this would be a video. We won't look one up. And the source, just give it a pound sign and then insert record. Okay, your request was successful. So this is the page we had it sent to, which I haven't shown you how I built it yet, but I will show you that um, later on. Click OK, and it should take you right back to this page. So here we are. Now we just need to see if it works. So click back to blog, and there it is at the top. <clears throat> this is a dynamic title. This is my third subtitle. It's got the appropriate date, name, all kinds of good information. Download source code. should just be a pound sign. That's all we put in. And so it appears to be working just fine. Now, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm actually going to cut out all this information here. And then you'll kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just adding like label 
author. And then after each one, cut that out. After each one, I'm going to go ahead and add a break tag so that it all aligns properly. And this is the title. So I'm not going to make you watch me do all this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I will complete this and then I will come back and show you exactly what I did. Okay, we're back and some of the things that I've done are um, I created labels instead of table rows <clears throat> for each uh, basically input field label and I gave it a for tag equal to um, whatever I wanted to. That just says name. It doesn't really matter what you use there. You don't even have to use a for tag if you don't want to. Um, but it's, you know, label for details. I also added a break tag and the only reason I did that was because sometimes the forms were running together, the break tag <clears throat> split them up nice and evenly. Um, I added uh, for the article and the video instead of doing the uh, normal text field, I actually changed them to text areas and I gave them uh, 10 rows, 50 columns for the article because it would obviously be typing a lot and then I used a smaller one, only 5 rows tall for the video. And then I also added a class of submit to the submit button and I have a class written in my CSS file so that'll look pretty and I also did um, I changed the value to add post, it was insert and so I wanted it to say add post so it's nice and neat. So now if we go back and look at it, this is what it looks like now. So I have some styling for the labels and it adds this three-quarter dotted line around it and it adds some rounded corners, just very subtle rounded corners and it adds this nice little blue line around them. The add post now looks like every other button on the page. So you can kind of see how those look. They all look very similar. And so now let's go ahead, let's see if we can get the update page done as well. So um, the update page, uh, it doesn't. I'm not going to do the update forms just yet. We'll do that in the very next tutorial. But we're going to do um, updating the admin page information. So let's jump on over to MAMP. Open start page, PHP my admin. This should all be getting very familiar if you've been doing all the tutorials. There's, I mean, it's kind of repetitive, but click on the admin table, and then let's insert and. Uh, Let's go ahead for the logo. Let's just paste in. Oh, that's not what I want to paste. Let me see what that was. If we jump to style and then we search logo. Sometimes it's quicker just to do command F. Logo, find next. There it is. We want this link. This is the current link to the current logo. Go ahead and paste that in. And we want the title, and for now let's just do my site. The ID we can leave blank. The metadata, your site description goes here. And analytics, we'll just do uh, Google Analytics. And the reason I did the HTML comment form is because I don't want that actually to affect the head of the page. So I put it within there. This will be in tags. This will be in tags. So those should be all okay. But this one I want it to just be commented out for now. So click go. And now come back over to your page. Close that. Go to the source code. Come to the top here. And under welcome, we can just do... Welcome to the admin page. And then let's do, uh, instead of, let's do update record here. Update wizard. And it's the same kind of thing here. It's real easy. Oh, it says we need to create database connection. We have that. We need a binding. Let's add a record set. And this time we need to call this one, we'll just call it admin, because it's admin information from the table admin. And uh, we can just select all, that will be just fine. Filter. 
And I think that'll be okay. I think we can just do that for now. Click OK. Now it pulls all that in for us. Come back down here under Welcome. And let's do an update. DB yeah, connection, table to update admin, select records from admin, unique column ID is ID. We don't need to change the ID, the title, the logo, the meta, everything else we will change. After updating, go to success.php. Click OK. And now let's just see if that worked. Okay, it worked. My site, that's all in there. And now if we change these, my cool site says it was successful, comes back, and now it's saved. Um, I'll show you exactly how to access those in the next video, and we'll be doing the update post as well as deleting a post. Uh, so stick around for those in the very next lesson. I'm going to wrap this one up so I don't run long.